In this video, I want to explain what a fever is. So the terms fever, someone with a fever is described as being febrile. We also talk about a pyrexia, which again means an increased body temperature for the reasons of a disease. And if someone's uh, got a pyrexia, they are described as being pyrexial. If you have no fever, A without, if you have no fever, you're afebrile. So hopefully you and me are afebrile at the moment. And if you have no pyrexia, you're apyrexial, without pyrexia. So afebrile and apyrexial mean exactly the same thing. And pyrexia and fever mean exactly the same thing. Different terms. Now here we have body temperature. Um, 37, 38, 39, 40 degrees centigrade. And these are the equivalents in, in Fahrenheit up there. And here we have time along here. There we have time. Now, um, this red line here is going to indicate the set point of the hypothalamus. Now, what the heck is the hypothalamus? Well, the hypothalamus is the part of the brain that controls body temperature at the base of the brain. It's all controlled from this area called the hypothalamus. So let, let's take me at the moment. So here's my temperature, same about that. Now, if my temperature falls below the set point of the hypothalamus, my body tries to warm me up. If my body temperature goes above the point set by my hypothalamus, the body tries to cool me down. So if I go running on a hot day, my temperature is going to go up, the hypothalamus is going to recognise that, and it's going to make me sweat. So that is the set point of the hypothalamus there. So normally body temperature is just tagging along with that. It's the, essentially the same, it's the same as that. So there we have health. We have body temperature and we have that regulated by the hypothalamus. Now, if there is infection, the body, well, if there's infection, there'll be, there'll be pyrogens. Now, gen is beginning, pyro is heat, beginning of heat. So viral infection or bacterial infection work as uh, exogenous pyrogens. They, they can affect the hypothalamus from outside. But the main thing that happens here is the viruses and bacteria are detected by the body's white blood cells. And the body's white blood cells, the leukocytes, release cytokines. Now cytokines are a chemical transmitter that goes between different cells. So cytocells, kine, kinos, movement. So infection whether it's bacteria or viruses. Yes, the viruses and bacteria will work as cytokines affecting the, uh, will, will work as pyrogens affecting the hypothalamus. So pyro, heat, gen beginning, they begin heat. But the main thing that happens is the viruses and the bacteria affect the white cells and the white cells release the cytokines and the cytokines affect the hypothalamus quite big time. So infection causes the release of cytokines. Cytokines are pyrogens although the infection will cause some effect on the hypothalamus as well. Exogenous pyrogens, but the pyrogens that the body produces, these cytokines, affect the hypothalamus. And this affects thermoregulation. Right, ignore that bit for now. So this is what's happening. So the hypothalamus is told there's an infection. And the hypothalamus thinks, right, there's an infection. What I have to do is increase the body temperature. So what the hypothalamus does is it increases the set point, say up to about 39 if you've got a good fever, and then that set point stays high like that. Now what happens now is the body realises <clears throat> that the set point has increased. This is the body temperature here. So it needs to try and warm you up. So it tries to warm you up. It lags a little bit behind the hypothalamus, but it tries to warm you up like this until it gets to the new set point, the new febrile set point. So remember the red line is the hypothalamus. And the blue line is the body temperature. So we don't get confused. Now, why does it do this? Why does this, why does this happen? Well, what happens is that when you have a virus or a, a bacterial infection, the body wants to get rid of it. And your body has a system called the immune system that does just that. 
but you don't want your immune system working flat out all the time when you're not ill. So increasing the temperature of the body is the natural way of increasing the efficiency of the immune system. So when you have a fever or a pyrexia, your immune system is working more efficiently than it will at lower temperatures. Viral infections can be dealt with more quickly. Bacterial infections can be dealt with more quickly. It's a natural defense mechanism. Now in the hypothalamus, there's complicated mechanisms stimulated by the cytokines. <clears throat> so in the hypothalamus, it's what we call prostaglandin mechanisms. There's prostaglandin mechanisms in the hypothalamus that turn up the set point of the hypothalamus. They turn it up quite deliberately, quite deliberately, to improve the efficiency of the immune system. And uh, it also means that a lot of bacteria and viruses don't like uh, these kind of temperatures and they're more likely to be killed and they're more likely to die. So up here, the body's immune system's working well. So the hypothalamus will keep the temperature higher <coughs> for a period of time, like that. Could be a few days. And the body temperature will just uh, tag along like that. like that. And then when your body, when the immune system's got rid of the infection, the hypothalamus will realize that there's no cytokines stimulating it anymore because the infection's gone. So we don't have the exogenous cytokines stimulating the release of the endogenous cytokines from the white cells, from the leukocytes. So the body temperature, the set point in the hypothalamus will go back down to normal like that. And again, very often there's a bit of a lag. The body takes a while to catch up. And everything's back to normal again. Those two lines are now essentially the, at the same level again. <coughs> like that. So that's good. But when the body temperature's up here, the immune system is working more effectively. So that means when you first start becoming ill, can you see you're in a situation when you first start becoming ill, where the set point of the hypothalamus at the same point in time is above what the body temperature is, just there. Now, even though the temperature is already a little bit high here, <clears throat> the hypothalamus set point is higher than the body temperature. So the, the hypothalamus is trying to warm the body up and it does that by making you feel cold. So you'll, get, you'll go pale, you'll have constriction of the peripheral blood vessels. The hair erector muscles can go up you'll start shivering. And so we get these, this blue line here, when the body temperature is going up, we get these chills. And this is called a rigor, so if you're shaky, chattering teeth, <clears throat> that's, a, that's a rigor, your body temperature is going up. You feel cold, so you pile on the blankets and all sorts of things like that, so your body temperature goes up, then it stays hot. Now, when you're here, so when you're here, you feel cold. When you're here, you don't feel hot or cold. When you're here, you don't feel hot or cold because your body temperature is the same as the temperature of the hypothalamus. But when it's on the way up, you feel cold. Then when it's on the way down, if you can see here, that the temp if you take that point there, for example, so now the temperature of the hypothalamus is lower than the body temperature. So the body is trying to cool you down at this point. So here you can feel hot. So when the fever's going down, you can feel hot. And this point here where the fever first starts to abate, just there, that point there, that's called the crisis point. Now in the old days where people used to get a lot of bacterial infections, <clears throat> the family would sit around the bed waiting for the crisis point. And if it didn't happen, the patient may die. And if it did happen, the crisis point happens and the fever starts to go down. They know the loved one is likely to get better. So that's the crisis point there. So these are basically the stages in a fever. Now, it, it doesn't work as simple as this sometimes. So sometimes what might happen is um, you'll put your hypothalamus will go up, then it'll go down a bit, then it'll go up, then it'll go down a bit. <clears throat> so it can actually vary. So what this means is you kind of feel hot and cold. So you know when, you, when you've got a, a fever and you're ill, you feel hot and cold sometimes. That's because your body temperature is chasing your hypothalamus. So if your hypothalamus goes up and your, body temp your hypothalamus set point goes up and your body temperature is below that, you'll feel cold. So the body tries to warm you up. But if the hypothalamus set points go, it goes down, but the body temperature is higher than that, you'll feel hot as the hypothalamus and the body try to cool you down. So that's what's happening. And at this point, you're gonna feel ill as well. So you feel ill. 
And that's that's good because if you're ill, you're going to be inactive. You're going to go to bed because when you've got an active infection, exercise is the worst thing you can do. You need to rest. So this is the most natural mechanism in the world. <clears throat> it's all generated by um, very clever mechanisms in white cells releasing these endogenous pyrogens. All the all the prostaglandin mechanisms in the hypothalamus are all set up to uh, raise the body temperature. But these prostaglandins are inhibited if we take drugs called antipyuretics, aspirin, ibuprofen, paracetamol, acetaminophen. These are drugs which reduce body temperature. So these antipyuretics, generally what they do is they interfere with the hypothalamus, bringing the set point back down to normal. But the set point doesn't want to be normal, it's just tried to increase it. <clears throat> and here we are taking drugs to bring it back down to normal. Now, I'm not talking about children in this video, I'm talking about adults, so children would take a little longer to explain. But in adults, can you see that the fever is a protective mechanism? The fever is getting rid of the, the infection, it's helping the body fight the infection. So automatically to reduce the fever is, is, is going to work against <clears throat> the natural defense mechanisms of the hypothalamus that are trying to, um, trying to warm you up to get rid of this infection. And things go with this. So, for example, for every degree temperature, your body goes up. That increases your metabolic rate by about 13%. And that increases your heart rate by about 12 beats per minute as you need more blood to get round to the muscles to produce the, to produce the energy because um, heat, <coughs> to produce heat is a very energy-demanding uh, process. Um, so your temperature go, as your temperature goes up, your heart rate is going to go up. You're going to feel awful. But that's all part of getting better. And if you take the antipyuretics, if you bring the temperature down, you feel better. Then you start doing things, which is the worst thing you can do when you've got an infection. You should be resting and taking it easy. <clears throat> so it's surprising how many doctors that still, still, when the temperature is 37.1 degrees centigrade, they're like, ooh, 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 temperature's high. Give them paracetamol. Give them acetaminophen. Give them ibuprofen. Get the temperature down. Well, if you do that, you're working against the natural effects of the body. This, this is physiology that is, is actually part of human anatomy and physiology. It's, it's intrinsic to us. And it's a natural defense mechanism. And uh, that's the nature of a fever.